we think there are great opportunities for the sector uh, in Queensland into the future in partnership with the government. We think there are great opportunities for your customers and clients uh, into the future because of those partnerships with government. And we think that things can be done better. In fact, we know things can be done better. We look at other states and we can see that services can be provided and, uh, in a more cost-effective way that benefit uh, the clients, and, and that is essentially our aim. So I'm very pleased to be here. I'm a passionate supporter of uh, uh, the transition that the government uh, is, uh, under, uh, has underway at the moment. The Treasurer is right that uh, both the, uh, him and the uh, Premier are also uh, passionate uh, about this. A demonstration of that is, in fact, that... Um, the renewal program, which involves COA, all yeah. the uh, uh, changes in government, um, will move next week from uh, the Public Service Commission to the Premier's department. We'll have uh, direct access. Um, I'll be working directly with the Treasurer and the Premier to ensure that um, the transition yeah. to the way that we provide services uh, is, yeah. done, uh, I guess, a timely fashion, and sometimes that means we can do things straight away. Sometimes it means we need to take things slowly and, and uh, as well to be careful about uh, the people that uh, we're carrying. It's an absolute demonstration that uh, uh, how serious uh, the government is about this. There are no uh, two more senior ministers than the Treasurer and the Premier, so I'm pleased I'm pleased to have accepted that role and uh, look forward to working with the Treasurer uh, into the future. I thought it might be worthwhile to uh, let you know about the government's uh, vision and goal. This was established in August last year. I think year. It, uh, it kind of uh, sets the groundwork for um, why we're doing what we're doing and, um, uh, and where this has come from. It was a joint meeting between all of the ministers and all of the heads of the public service to uh, set a direction for the government uh, for the foreseeable future. So the vision is to be a government of the 21st century, one government that is connected and working together to deliver smarter, simpler outcomes that are responsive to the needs of Queenslanders now and for the future. We will create opportunities in partnership, so not alone, but in partnership that are all about positive outcomes rather than just service delivery and regulation. And that pretty much encapsulates what the Treasurer um, just said. So the key things probably to focus on there are smarter and simpler, which is what the red tape reduction, I guess, is about, and the partnership. We uh, have come to a recognition that uh, we, can't, uh, we can't do everything on our own um, and we're not getting the best outcomes trying The to. goal, of course, is to be the most responsive and respected public service in the nation. Uh, not second, not third but the best. And we're measuring that. Every six months we're doing a survey across the nation check to check what the um, people are th uh, saying about the public services across a range of key public services uh, they're getting. That is not necessarily delivered by the state but maybe f uh, but probably funded by we're state. Um, doing that check every six months to see how we're going and that will continue. So the uh, Premier's been very clear, he wants us to be the best and uh, why would you uh, have a, a goal that was anything less than that? The Queensland Government will be more effective, deliver value for money and ultimately ultimately achieve better outcomes for Queensland. Our public service employees know that, but it's important also that our partners know that this is where we're heading. This is what we want to achieve. We, can, we have recognised that we can only do it in partnership. Successfully achieving our vision and goal will require innovation. We see this probably in a historical con uh, context. The job net outsourcing that was done by the uh, federal government was a tremendous success. It was done uh, probably eight years ago. It was a tremendous success because the government didn't prescribe to um, the NGO sector or to the private sector how they could deliver the services or what services necessarily needed to be delivered. It allowed for there to be innovation within NGOs and within the private sector about how those job services would be provided. And we see the way forward for us very much in that way. When we are going through contestability or through outsourcing arrangements, we don't want to be prescriptive to um, NGOs in particular about how you must provide the service or how, you know, if we're just going to say to you, you've got to provide it in exactly the same way that we are, well, we're not going to get very different outcomes, possibly. So we, we want to allow for innovation. We want to allow for you, you to come up with um, good ideas. We, not, we don't have them all. On, in fact, um, uh, because of, of the history, we, um, you, unfortunately, it's human nature to be uh, current state thinkers. You kind of look at what you've got now and think, well, that's the way it's going to be. We need all of your um, uh, creative thoughts about how we can do things better for the customer. And the customer has got to be at the, uh, uh, or the client has got to be at the centre of everything that we we're do. looking for. Innovation in our workplace. Um, we're looking for innovation with our partnerships and uh, we're looking for innovation uh, right across uh, government, whether we're engaging with uh, 
um, the federal government, with local governments or NGOs. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time trying to explain Queensland's renewal framework. You'll see up the top left hand side this B number one. That is the, uh, if you like, the new um, branding that uh, will go across um, all government renewal programs and uh, all COA um, programs. That is a constant reminder that our mission is, uh, our vision is to be the, the best in the country. That's what that's about. You're going to see a lot of that. It'll be on all government uh, documentation um, around anything that we're trying to do that's innovative. And it's a great reminder that uh, uh, keeps people focused, I we think. We have three main elements to uh, Queensland's renewal framework. There's the lead. Um, so uh, that's about leadership um, and the, the government uh, is providing that. I'm not going to go too much into that today. because that's mainly internal to government. Engage, there's a little bit of engagement, uh, but that, uh, that re relates to you, but um, mainly that's with our workforce about um, trying to change their behaviours. What I'm going to spend a lot of time on today with you is enable because that's where really there are great opportunities with the NGOs um, uh, sector. Our measures of success, of course, you'll see um, on the right-hand side, uh, we want to engage increase productivity, we want to um, get a better place to work, we want to improve customer experience and we want to um, decrease the cost to Queenslanders. Work closely with the uh, Treasurer and uh, one, one figure that just sticks in my mind, I'm also on the Health Ref uh, Reform Board as well, is that if we do nothing to reform the way we provide health services in Queensland, then the health budget will rise, continue to rise and, and by only 2030 it will consume the entire state budget. There will be not one dollar left for anything else. Not for education, not for transport or roads, not for police, not a dime left for anything else. So we obviously continue to do things the way that we have. We must be innovative and we must look, for, uh, look at providing services in different ways. So this is the enable. You'll see uh, a range of boxes and this is not exhaustive because we had to fit the word enable in. There's many more things that fit in there than that. It's um, uh, whole of government reporting. That's a red tape uh, uh, reduction that we uh, spoke about. Contestability framework. Uh, which the Treasurer has spoken about. Uh, one Stop Shop, which is a, a program to fleet. Shop yes. fronts where people, you can just go to one place and you'll be able to deal with any government service. Uh, legislative reform, that's more on the uh, red tape uh, reduction and trying to streamline that simpler, smarter ethos. That's Most bills that I notice go through the Parliament these days seem to be about that. It's, uh, it's about uh, stripping out uh, red tape and trying to streamline process yes. and uh, that's great to see. Performance management, well, I need to be frank, we're not very, we haven't been very good at performance management. Generally, if you've joined the public service, you've had for life, regardless of um, how you perform. It comes up as the number one issue from our employees uh, in um, our employee serv surveys. They say that we don't do performance management well and they, they don't like the fact that we um, don't hold people to account. People who um, aren't working as hard uh, or as well as they should do, or perhaps just not working well with others. So we need to do better at that. Procurement transformation, another uh, area which um, really intersects with you. Yeah. Procurement processes have been um, very cumbersome, very strict, not, en not enabling that um, innovation that we've been talking about. Um, we need to uh, allow for that and, and uh, reform our procurement yeah. ways of doing things to en enable uh, more innovative uh, solutions to be found. The open data initiative, we're trying to put uh, as much data on the internet, uh, on the websites uh, as possible so that you can data You shouldn't mine. need to do a, a, an RTI yeah. to find out what uh, some basic information that might help you in, in your roles um, in providing services, seeing where growth is, transport yeah. patterns or, or things of that nature. Corporate services renewal, that's dry internal government stuff. I'm not going to bore you with that. <laughs> what ICT strategy is very important. Um, obviously, there's a great opportunity for the Queensland government to get with it in the ICT world. In many cases, we still require people to fill out um, manually uh, forms, handwrite forms. Uh, even if we do have a, uh, a website, it, it's often very clunky. It's not very user-friendly. Um, we have very few phone apps um, uh, available um, still, uh, and yet phone apps are, are a great way to uh, allow people to interact um, with any business, uh, whether it be government or NGO. We're getting better at that. We're developing one. I'll, pro I'll, I'll plug one. Queensland yeah. Police uh, have got a phone app um, out and it's uh, it's really uh, great value. I was so in a traffic accident recently. I, had, I, I didn't have the phone app, but I downloaded it because they told me about it when I rang up. And it was much, much quicker than waiting for a police officer to turn up uh, to the traffic accident um, because literally it, it took 
two minutes to download, you take a photo of your car, it automatically tells you know, locates where you are, so it fills in the address and everything for you, and you send it off. And uh, much quicker than waiting for uh, the police to turn up, and uh, you're not clogging up roads as well. But so I, I think you can also report burglaries and other things. So, a great uh, innovation. So, uh, I see, but ICT is going to be very important, uh, obviously, for any dealing with customers into the future. Renewal is about delivering our vision and uh, achieving our goals. So, customer focus, innovation, excellence, agility, and productivity. Governance and accountability, of course, it's the public's money. We've always got to be careful about governance and accountability. Contestability, commissioning and core services. And um, contestability is important. Why? Well, it's not about necessarily the dollars. It's about trying to get the best services delivered for Queensland. It, it is about trying to find better ways of delivering service. We know that we don't I have guess, a right to say that only state governments can, can, can continue to provide services, be, be actually the service provider. It, we think that there is a much better way forward. So what's uh, contest? Contestability, it's about finding new and better ways to deliver services for Queensland's changing needs. Contestability continually challenges what we do and how we do and That's it. really important. Can't be set and forget. You can't just say, well, that's the way we do things and we're never going to change. Got to be continually challenging that and say, are we delivering the best for our people? It's got to create opportunities for innovation, partnerships and a diversity of choice, much in the way that the NDIS does. I think that's a, that's a, you know, seems to be a, a really good model, embraced by all, all, all sides of politics. Contestability ensures the best possible service at the best possible time and place at the best possible price. We use our resources more effectively to ensure value for money for Queenslanders and we, uh, the need for public services are constantly changing and uh, we need to be much more flexible in that. So we must uh, allow our services to evolve uh, and we must evolve in the way that they're delivered. Um, in terms of uh, contestability... You might recall that um, uh, it's not that long ago, certainly, uh, that banking and insurance were provided by government. Um, uh, Suncorp uh, was originally, of course, owned by the state government. Uh, the Commonwealth Bank was owned by the federal government. Um, there was uh, SGIO and a range of other insurance uh, arms that were owned by governments. Governments have exited all of those and uh, no one, I don't think, would argue that uh, government should get back into the banking business or into the uh, insurance business. Yeah. The areas where we think there are greatest opportunity for, for contestability. So in utilities, um, that's uh, obviously uh, water and power and things like that. Transport infrastructure. Toll roads are, are fairly common all around the world and um, provided by private providers. Um, same thing. Buses. Yeah. Um, most of our buses in South East Queensland are already provided by private providers. Um, health and education, obviously private hospitals and um, private uh, or NGO schools uh, are very common and very successful, and, uh, not just for the wealthy. Um, I think one of the great um, things that uh, is happening in service provision um, is happening actually uh, with Indigenous yes. residents of Cape York and um, the Gulf of Carpentaria. There are a number of NGOs who are um, uh, providing scholarships for um, kids in schools um, from that area and uh, the outcomes are just tremendous. I was fortunate enough to um, meet with the Australian Indigenous Education Foundation a couple of weeks ago. 91% of the people who are getting, the kids who are getting their scholarships are completing grade 12, which is just fantastic. And um, unfortunately, the government hasn't managed to get anywhere near that sort of completion rate in those areas. And um, you know, uh, we need to we need to harness some more. You know, that's a great example of um, how NGOs uh, are often much better at providing services than government. Prisons. We already have two private prisons in Queensland. Not just room for engaging more with the private sector, but also NGO sector in in, in um, custodial uh, uh, non custodial services. So um, I think there's uh, a lot of opportunity in that area. Um, police is very topical, of course, uh, with the speed cameras and so on. But you can see that it kind of decreases as you go down to legislation and policy advice where there's um, there's probably not much uh, room. But generally in the service sector, there's quite a lot of room for uh, contestability. We have a, uh, a contestability life cycle, which is, um, uh, like everything else in government, a uh, process. But we've tried to make it pretty simple. All departments who are providing services will go through that and uh, we will evaluate whether or not services can be um, provided, should be made contestable, and if they can be right provided by somebody else for the benefit of the community. There are uh, minimum documentation requirements to complete each stage gate, so um, we, we need to uh, ensure... Departments are being uh, open and frank about what their real costs are. That's quite um, difficult to establish sometimes. 
but we need to separate, for example, um, policy and uh, regulation from uh, service delivery arms of, uh, of uh, departments so that we can uh, uh, work out what the real costs are. We need to have good governance to uh, ensure that it's a, a fair and even playing field for uh, NGOs who want to participate in these processes. Um, it's uh, no point if you, uh, you won't engage if you think it's uh, rigged from the start and uh, we won't uh, allow that to happen. Um, I sit on a number of um, different levels of the governance arrangements for this and, and uh, we'll be very careful about that. Practice and capability support. This is becoming a, a, a issue. Big, uh, we've come to a realisation that we've got a real capability deficit within government in terms of um, going through some of these processes. I'll just be frank about that. That's a historical thing because we, don't, we haven't, as a government, been doing the, this kind of work. So we don't have people who are used to um, going through contestability processes or running contestability processes. We don't have many staff who are used to designing contracts um, or partnering with NGOs. We certainly don't have anywhere near enough. And uh, we don't have uh, people who are, have the background in contract management because, of course, it's not just uh, establishing a contract. They all need to be managed on an ongoing basis. So um, we're trying to upskill internally, but we also realise that um, the you might need to upskill your people as well because um, there's going to be uh, a whole range of new processes for um, NGOs to go through. And uh, so we're having a bit of a think about um, how we can support you uh, in that, in uh, upskilling um, uh, your staff as well, because uh, uh, we need to have the uh, capability across the board. Everyone needs to have that to get the uh, best outcomes. Well, so uh, just on that, we've sort of established a bit of a mantra of buy, borrow or build when we talk about capability. So we can buy it in, we can you know, get consultants in, um, borrow, which is uh, we're trying to do um, uh, a lot more of. Uh, many other states, as you would know, are way ahead of us in this uh, in this uh, field. Uh, we are uh, really uh, the last state, really, to start this kind of process. So we're trying to borrow staff from other states and even New Zealand um, to uh, bring into our departments to have uh, knowledge exchange, the comments for a year or two years while we go th through right. this period of activity. And, uh, build, well, obviously that's training our staff uh, internally. So um, buy, borrow and build is the way that we're trying to approach it. We, uh, want to have a uh, recognised methodology to support the process uh, through the framework. They all become, can become familiar with the way things uh, are done and you don't have to relearn um, every time you uh, approach government uh, in a contestability round, you don't have to relearn the process, it, it becomes a standardised process. So all of this is supported by uh, these new Queensland government values that were launched here about uh, two weeks ago by the uh, Premier and on this very stage. So customers first, and this is absolutely uh, driving everything. So these, uh, these values are for all of our staff, and it is uh, really the first time that we've had a whole of government uh, value system in Queensland. Uh, they were developed not by the, uh, not top down, but by our staff. Customers uh, first, ideas into action, unleash potential, very important. Be courageous is also uh, important. Is the, the way of um, uh, working in government that uh, we tend to be very cautious, um, or have tended to be very cautious. Um, we are, are being um, allowed to um, be much more courageous in the way that uh, we uh, work in our everyday. It means put, we've been pushing delegations down and allowing uh, uh, more junior staff to um, take uh, uh, decisions uh, instead of uh, having five or six um, um, people approve it as we go up and empowering our people. So very important that we let our people get on with it. I just want to talk very quickly about um, some of the successes that have been achieved so, so far. And, and we don't talk about them enough. This is um, the NEAT uh, figures. This is access to emergency departments. Um, so percentage of patients who leave emergency departments within four hours, um, category one patients. You can see that um, it had been getting progressively worse. In fact, we had the worst numbers in the country um, in uh, the last... Uh, uh, particularly the last 18 months, we've seen a massive turnaround. Um, in fact, we now have the best numbers in the country. You will be seen quicker in a Queensland um, major hospital emergency department than anywhere else in the country, which is just fantastic. Um, and to do it in really a little over a year. Doctors and nurses are doing great things. Um, how did we do it? 
by, by that simpler, smarter. We have simpl simplified the processes, we've worked smarter, we ask the people who actually work in the departments to redesign, to work with the team to redesign their processes, and that has worked. It's having a flow-on effect. Ambulance response time dropping. So this is for code one. In metropolitan areas, they've dropped much more than 42 seconds. This is across the whole state, these figures. And of course, code one cases are where it's a life and, life and death thing. 42 seconds might not sound like long now, but if you're um, having a heart attack, 42 seconds is a very long time. That's uh, because ambulances aren't ramped at hospitals as much as they were. That's getting along well. In our trains, uh, the Metropolitan Train Network, um, we've got uh, on-time delivery up 96%. That's um, world's best practice, pretty much. We won't get uh, much better than that. We'll try, but we won't get probably much better than that. That's at the same time as, of course, you would know, we've taken a number of staff out of Queensland. It's right. been uh, a great achievement. Uh, they're reducing their costs and improving their service to And uh, reducing uh, red tape, so you can see that um, environmental impact studies have been, times have been reduced by 50%. So that's allowing the economy to get going again. So these are just some of the examples of um, real improvement across the public service.